Well, hello and welcome. We're going to be playing a donation list today. We're going to start the stream with, with this. And first of all, thank you, Charles Uno, with that, for that tier one subscription. Welcome to the Primetime Stronghold. We're starting on a strong note. Good, good, good. So, what we are going to try out today is going to be um, a donation list, which was actually uh, facilitated by Cora. Thank you so much, Cora, for, for the support. And what we're going to be playing here is a little bit of um, a throwback. Okay, we're going to be playing uh, Amulet with Steerings and once upon a time, no Explorers. So uh, we're going to be playing only 28 lands as opposed to the 30 that, that we've been running uh, recently. And we're going to try to, we're playing a little bit less of in the form of castles, and we're going to try to maximize steerings a little bit more. Uh, we're going to see how this works out. We we'll actually have the, the two trinket mages as well. Um, is this the Monday list you were talking about? Let me see. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, you can try one or two trinket mages. Um, I also tried uh, two trinket mages and two explorers. Uh, you can mess around with those numbers, reach in if you want. Uh, but yeah, so this is what we're going to be doing today. We have 28 lands, only one field, only two castles. Only two reading pool, we're not trying to maximize on castle as much. Uh, so we're going back to, to two gemstone mines. Uh, Ancient Steering should help us uh, find a castle more reliably anyway. So that hopefully should not be a problem. And we are actually going a little bit harder on the amulets, you know, being able to find them with Ancient Steering and with Trinket Mage as well. So we're going to see how this how this uh, uh, plays out. Uh, in the side where we have uh, the second field, we're only playing one in the main deck. So for the matchups like Death Shadow, John, etc., where we actually do want multiple copies of field of the dead, we can bring in the second one as needed. Uh, then we have the second explosives and a little bit of a toolbox um, and toolbox uh, for our Trinket Mages. So we have Graf Digger's Cage and Pied Needle as well. Of course, this toolbox is going to be enhanced by the presence of Ancient Steerings, obviously, because we get Steerings into uh, either one of these cards. So that should make it... Um, it should be. It should make this toolbox a little bit uh, more powerful than uh, with just the presence of the trinket mages, right? Uh, then we have a couple of uh, pieces of counter magic in the form of this tinsel stroke, a couple of dismembers as well, and then uh, just the classics on the on, on, on as far as the, the green cards go uh, with the the two beast within, which I simply expect these to become a staple. And mostly because of, you know, Ashiok. That card is pretty, it's pretty good against us. So we have to have a plan against Ashiok. And I think that Beast Within is, is actually the just like the best tool that we have for the job. And not that we have multiple tools for the job. <laughs> like it's actually not easy for us to answer a Planeswalker uh, out of, uh, you know, effectively mono green colors. So we're going to see how that goes. Boris with the Twitch from sub, thank you so much for the continued support. Welcome back to the Prime Time Stronghold. And I didn't forget about your question, Rudy. I was just going over the the um, the deck there real quick. Afternoon, hope all is well. Taking a second to drop in and ask a question about the Discord. What is it and how does one get into there? Been really enjoying the content and also the decks in paper. Yeah, that's awesome, Rudy. I appreciate it. Uh, in order to join the Discord, all you need to do is you need to uh, use that link over there. Easy, right? Easy. All right, Papelucho is our first victim of the day. What do you got, Papelucho? Uh huh. Actually, I think I'm gonna keep this. So I'm definitely gonna prioritize finding a Titan with this once upon a time. And then we can try to find a bounce line with this ancient. Never mind. We have a Titan already. So we're going to try to find a bounce line here. And then we're going to try to find um, an amulet with the steerings. If we do find an amulet here, then we basically just have everything and we are great. Uh oh. No bad boy. No blue guy. No blue guy. Uh, sure, you can attack with your old arc. That's good for me. All right, uh, ancient strings. Ugh, bad beats. Um, 
We still have turn three Titan mana here, though. So that's nice. Now the question is, do I want Bojugabog or do I want the second blue source? What do you think regarding the ML list using the new Dryden Valakut? Ermimod could it be a real deck? We have we have a command for that, Boris. Hello chat, how are we doing today? We're doing great, uh, Modrius. Uh, this is actually not an easy an easy take though. Bojuki Bog or Cynical's Chamber. I don't think that Infect has been playing very many of the plus six spell. Also, one of these scouts is gonna go under the bus. I thought you did a command for that, yeah, Doctor. Uh, and now that I'm thinking about it, after I drew the gemstone mine, I should have probably just played the Azusa here. That would have been a better line. Okay, but yeah, of course that, that ship has sailed, obviously. Um, yeah, playing Azusa would have been such a better line. It's fine, though. We're still going to have Titan Mana on 3, which is good for us. Uh, as long as my opponent doesn't have a Blighted Agent, we should be fine. No, oh, Distortion Strike, yeah, that's pretty good too. So that should be lethal. No, I'm not trying to wear a big monkey. I don't think we're very good for amulets. In fact, I think it's pretty close to just bad, like straight up bad. It doesn't fit in our curve. It doesn't do anything that we want to do. It's not very good. They have the Blade Agent too. Wow, that's insane. Opponent's draw was pretty good. Why 30 was now? Uh, I am trying a donation list. Not three. That is three, so any plus four kills me. Can I stop a plus four? I don't think I can. So I think we're simply gonna cast our Titan. And we're gonna hope it's good enough, even though it's not gonna. Maybe my opponent doesn't have a single... They just don't have anything. That'd be great. My opponent didn't have anything at all. All right, do your worst, OP. Thanks a lot, back to the book, say go, good luck, and hope everybody, yeah, thank you, really, appreciate it. Actually, I think that's kind of a mistake. They should have used this Sorcerer Strike in here, and I mean, they can play around Slaughter Pack for free. I know that Amulet hasn't played Slaughter Pack in years, but I don't know, I could be, I could be packing some spice, you know? All right, opponent did a misclick. All right, we die to infect. Sell a V. Let's bring this, let's bring this, let's bring this, and force a bigger. All right. Do we try to bounce next? Uh, yeah, for sure. That's exactly what we're gonna be doing. Yeah, this it's, it's been a while since this one, huh? Um. But yeah, this is a donation list by by Cora. So we're giving it a shot. This matchup, unfortunately, seems a little bit slow for a little bit too fast for ancient steerings. I know that it finds explosives, but it's still pretty slow. They got radium fountain. Going back to three to Larry West might be nice. They got back to negation, and we can probably shave one summoner spec since my opponent's not answering my titans. Biz within Pog, yeah, we we have been playing Biz within. I've been testing Biz within for a while now. I think it's actually quite good. Uh, so we have a hand filled with interaction. So I'm going to keep it.
Billy Lillian have been, has been quite good at answering Ashiok specifically. When it moves to six. If Infed becomes a bigger part of the meta, is Melista worth considering? Certainly. Certainly so. Holding up this member here. No steering for Explore, pensás que van a bailar once por diamonds, se ocuparía de slot steering. No, um, this is a donation list. Rulo. Es una donation list, entonces por eso estoy jugando esta lista. Alright, so considering that my opponents, like, I love that they gave me for life and then I just paid this member. <laughs> um, okay, what to do here? I could expose my amulet, but there's kind of no reason for it. So I think I'm just gonna. Well, I guess I'm going to. If my opponent wants to spend their turn answering my my amulet, that's fine. Uh, but uh, because of my mana situation, I can actually tighten next turn if I play out this amulet. So it seems worth it. Uh, that's an Asusa. So if the T West is in play, I can play Asusa, hold up both bounce lands, and next turn I can float mana. Play bounce, float. Yeah, so I can transmit for Titan next turn. But I need to hold both bounce lands, both bounce, both bounce lands in hand. There we go. Figure it out. Blighted agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My opponent just uh, clearly doesn't. Uh, really understand what this matchup is about. Like, they brought too much interaction, which is completely irrelevant against us. Like, they are overvaluing amulets. Like, this, this is way too much interaction. If my opponent had a hand that would kill me, they would be in a much better spot. If they hadn't sideboarded, they would have been they would be in a better spot than they currently that they currently are. Uh, so this is Titan Mana. So I play Breeding Pool Shock. Then I play Untapped Castle. That's one, two, three, four. And I have enough mana to explode this on two and crack as well. Isn't that great? Castle's so good, man. Castle is so freaking good. Maybe the artifact painted spaces versus the explosives. That's uh, that's pretty irrelevant because um, uh, so I'm not going. I'm not dying to to damping sphere. So we're good. Um, it's pretty relevant because usually I'm going to be able to play the explosives and crack it immediately. So so let's do blue green. Gonna play EE for two. And opponent concedes. Yeah, this is this is way too much hate for for amulet. It, it amulet doesn't really matter that much in that matchup. My opponent just wants to have a quick, a fast hand and kill me before the amulet matters. The second matter once upon a time. No, no creo. No por ahora, por lo menos. Ban castle, I, I guess. Uh, this hand is fine. We have a blocker for. We have a blocker for a turn one Glacier Elf, so my opponent is going to need some help there. And thank you for the follow, by the way. I was Ghost X02. I'm going to start with Scout, and then we're going to be able to cast Steering Sun 2. <clears throat> Shock? Dismember? Yeah, my opponent clearly is, is... They don't understand what this matchup is about. This is way too much interaction. And they don't have a threat? Like, what is this? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, this is. This is no bueno for my opponent. Uh, well, we do have Titan mana already, so I guess I'd rather just have an answer to a potential Link Moth. Arkan with the raid! How's it going, Arkan? Thank you for the raid, and welcome to everybody coming from Arkan's stream. And this is why you don't play the amulet, you see? Um, we're playing some amulet here. We're currently playing a donation list, and we're playing against uh, an infect opponent that very grossly overboarded against us. <laughs> uh, very grossly overboarded. Um... Trying to think. Yeah, I guess I actually need to play to play the amulet here because if my opponent doesn't have an answer to the amulet, I can just play Simicos Chevron next turn. But yeah, they they cycle word look. Okay, yeah, so we're we're, we're looking pretty good here. Simic control infect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Simic control infect sounds a lot, right? Right. So we're gonna bounce the forest packed for prime time. I have no idea what my opponent's doing. We we should have not won that match. But here we are. I'll take it. I will take it for sure. Um, Alright, we got there. Feels good to be the infect, man. Feels good to be the infect. Granted, our, our opponent really helped us. Our opponent really, really helped us that match, but... But yeah. I guess it's it's one of the it's one of the upsides of playing of playing a deck like Amulet, right? It's like your opponents will very often not not know how to sideboard against you, or they will overvalue the amulet, or they will overvalue interaction like this member, uh, and they will misevaluate their own uh, position in the matchup, which is exactly what we saw happen. Uh, that um, that match, just my opponent misevaluated were what their role was, and then we were able to run them over because they were just packing a bunch of irrelevant interaction. This, unfortunately, it's a mulligan. If we if, if we whiff on finding an Asusa or a Scout out of the first one, some of the time we're gonna be way too far behind. So I'm gonna ship it. Uh, this one is much better. I think I'm gonna bottom this second tutorial list. Uh, do you rent or own an MTGO? Uh, I actually own all these cards. I've been playing Moto for, for a long time now, so if you... <clears throat> if you... I, I've been going infinite for a while, and if you go infinite, it's... it's it, basically, if you play just one deck, and you play it a lot, you can, you can go infinite. I don't want to say easily, but it's, it's like very achievable to go infinite. And if you all, the, the secret is to basically never play limited. <laughs> that is the secret to going infinite. If you always play constructed and you have, you are like reasonably good. Um, just by going through one, you are plus EV. And if you go for one or five O, then you you just make a lot of money. I mean, I I don't want to say a lot of money. You, you make you make like a reasonable amount of, amount of money. So all the money that I ever spent on Magic Online was ten dollars to create the account. I think you can create an account for free nowadays, but back in the day when I when I created it, you needed to actually pay to create the account. Yeah, so I I paid ten dollars to create the account, and then I paid like two hundred bucks or something to build Amulet, and then I never spent money on Magic Online again. Cubes ruin my name to your money. Yeah, if you play limited, you're gonna lose money eventually. Yeah, so a cube is like 
um, hundred. Yeah, so I, I I expect yeah. It, so it's basically ten bucks, and then man, never lucky. A cube is effectively ten bucks, and then <clears throat> and then you you get like if you go three one, I think you get your money back. If if you want to, if you go two one, you get your money back. And if you go 3-0, you get 150, so you get a cube and a half in value. So it's it's really it's really bad value to cube. And to play like actual limited, it's even worse value. So here I'm kind of just hoping that they don't have Wasteland Strangler. Cycle is good for me. That means that my opponent doesn't really have business. So here we can play the gemstone mine. So we can use this turn to transmute. And thanks to castle, we can present the item next turn. Wow, so punished. I should have played my land before. That's pretty brutal. Yeah, I, 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 I got punished really hard there. If I had played my land before, I should have played the Ghost Quarter first. Man, um, I need to focus. Whoopsies. It was also so easy to play around thanks to the scout. <laughs> I just got God hard. Um, actually, I want to blow up my opponent's land. I think I do, actually. And I'm going to get the Caves of Coilos because of a potential Adrasi problem. If you look at it, money today, it's... Share, you path my scout. Sounds about right. I'm definitely okay with these exchanges. Um, Vintage also killed my end Germany and I was playing shops and kept running to game one haymakers that ruined my options over and nine of Yeah, I mean You need to You need to be good and you also need for things to kind of break your way a little bit. So best draw here is by far the engineer this explosives for obvious reasons. Can you imagine if we top deck EE right now? I'm never lucky though, so it's not it's not bound to happen. El Drassi Temple is it's kinda bad for us. So we're probably gonna see I guess no they can't draw step foot. Pog. If I want a tier 1 deck in this meta, do you think I'm always that? Yep. Very much so. Very much so. I think I'm always very good right now. So here, I think I'm actually gonna take it. Because I don't want my opponent to be able to save their their guy and if they if they have flicker wisp here they would have needed to so I'm gonna get prime time and I'm gonna get field plus radium fountain so I don't die I get zombies and I don't die to I don't die to a flicker wisp and step And the next turn I can try to get out of range. <clears throat> Nothing like playing poorly and then getting bailout by your deck being awesome. Alright. 
Okay, now once upon a time a response, we're looking for a land here. Hmm. The best, the best thing we could have found there would have been a... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get the Gruel Turf. Uh, the best thing we could have found there would have been, of course, a Tolerio West. But I was, I was considering the fact that maybe it is okay for us to last card path. No, another scholar. Oh, that's that's crazy. All right, so we're gonna win this game easily then. Um, lol. So we're gonna have Vesuva field. Yeah. Opponent's dead. Play poorly didn't matter. Feels good, man. First vigor sage. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, so Bajuka Ball comes out. Fact of Negation and a couple of Summoner Specs are going to come out. Uh, Steering looks good. So does uh, Once Upon a Time looks a little bit less good because of Thalia. Scout is the nuts. Uh, amulet we can shave on. Certainly not necessary. Trinket also, even though it finds explosives, the fact that um, like it's so bad against Arbiter, it's kind of a big deal. <sighs> kind of miss Tracker in this kind of matchup. Have you played against the Dryad Skirtship build yesterday? Yeah, I think we played it against it yesterday, twice. My rampers. Yeah, I think I'm just not gonna play with Trinket Mage. Thoughts? I think it's good. No, you you definitely don't cut Asusa in this matchup. Your opponent's gonna be going after your lands. Like you really want Asusa. Sounds great. Sneep. Interaction ramp. That's what you want. No vial on one. All right, so we're gonna try to find a scout here. Found the prime time, which is not the end of the world. Uh, and I think I'm, there's nothing that I dis I am dis gonna be dismembering on turn one. So I think I just because if my opponent plays a scholar on two, I just let them take whatever they want. If they take my dismember, um, if they take my suicide, I just dismember the scholar. So they're gonna be forced to take my dismember, and I think it's if it, like I I cannot dismember in response. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, opponent, tell me more about that Damping Sphere. Yeah. So this is a classic, again, like my opponent's un like misunderstanding their role in the matchup. I think the Damping Sphere is only good against Amulet if, two things, if you're applying a lot of pressure to me, uh, that means uh, humans, for example. Humans is a deck that actually Dumping Sphere cripples you a fair amount against. Um, if you're applying a lot of pressure to me, or B, if you are um, Flicker Wisp, yeah, this, I think we're going to win this one. Um, and if you are forcing me to bring cards that are actually terrible against you, but... Um, so, for example, against, against Scape Shift, if, if in order to answer your Damping Sphere, I need to bring in cards like... Um, uh, what's his name? What's the name of this card? Reclamation Sage and Force of Vigor in order to answer your Damping Sphere, and that's literally all that, that it kills. Then uh, you're actually getting a lot of value by forcing me to have bad cards in my deck. And that's not the case here, because I want to... Uh, Hyper Anton, thank you for the follow. Uh, I want to have access to... Um, to uh, Force of Vigor and Rex Sage anyway, because of Aether Vial and Tide Holder Scholar. 
So you bringing in damping sphere is just making the cards that I'm going to be bringing in anyway that much better. So, and you're also not putting enough pressure on me in order to in order to take value of the damping sphere. You see, my opponent went turn to the damping sphere, so that means that they spent one entire turn where, where they did nothing. instead of putting something that was going to pressure me in play. They have Vial. I think I'm actually going to kill this Wisp. Um, this is uh, going to be potentially problematic. So I just want to just get rid of it for good. Just not have to worry about it anymore. And just move on with my life. So we're going to play a Gemstone Mine and I'm going to Pass the turn. Uh, my opponent sends step, I'm just going to beast within. If they do nothing, I'm just going to beast within the damping sphere and just play a titan, and that's going to be enough to win the game from there. What are more effective side cards your opponent could have? Ashiok. That is a card that actually poses a problem. Damping sphere is actually quite easy to, to work around. Even more like tight hull or scholars and stuff would be more problematic for me than damping sphere. Here we actually just let this go. Do you think it's okay to play sphere in Grixis Shadow versus Amulet? We apply pressure, but sometimes we only draw air. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Um, I think that the problem is that I think that all of like Shadow has so many good cards against Amulet to begin with. Shadow just has so many good cards against Amulet. Yeah, this Damping Sphere has Stex, brother. So there's, there's my, I think that my opponent's last card in hand is actually a Displacer. And there's two reasons <laughs> why Damping Sphere is not going to allow them to play a Displacer there. I mean, look at this. This, how much value is this? And that's what I'm saying. Like my opponent is making my cards that I already want to have in my deck that much better against them. I don't think it's a good <laughs> I don't think it's a good strategy for them. Let's put it that way. Like I already want to play explosives. I already want to play um I already want to play uh, what's what's the name of this card? Uh, Reclamation Sage. And now my opponent is just feeding is feeding my game plan basically by playing Damping Sphere in their deck. So if they sideboarded something like a Wasteland Strangler or something like that, that would be pressuring me and actually clocking me in order to make room for the Amping Sphere, they are, yeah, they're just making their deck worse against me. The way you talk about this explosives makes me rationally angry. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, though. Like, I have blue, blue, and I have a Bounce Land. So I was going to be able to explode this my opponent anyway. It's just instead of taking me two turns, it's, now it takes me only one turn. Um, so it's not like... You can say, yeah, I got, I got really lucky or whatever. In, in the first game, I certainly did. Because I needed to naturally draw the explosives. In this game, it's just like, whatever. Like, I was going to answer my opponent's board anyway. So I think it was actually incorrect for them to take prime time. I was two turns off of casting prime time. If they had taken my beast within, I would have been even further away from casting it. And this is on two, so they can't save this with a Flicker Wisp. So here comes the, what is it, the Thought Knot? Sure, take my base within, die to my Primeval Titan. So I just let this resolve. And unless my opponent's last card in hand is another Scholar, this should be game over. And even if it is, it, if I draw any untapped land, it, it's still game over. So they need for it to be a Tide Holder Scholar right now. And they don't have it, so we're done here. I guess they could have Lunin Arbiter. They don't. All right, GG's opponents, GG's.
back to streams. Uh, this is a donation list. Oh yeah, I actually forgot to edit the stream info. Please. Donation list titans. There we go. Another damping sphere. Oh no. How am I gonna ever beat this? Are we starting to see the pattern, chat? Are we starting to see the pattern here? I hope we're starting to see the pattern. Because it does seem like a pretty obvious pattern to me. I'm gonna gemstone mine, I feel a little dead. They can flash in a 3-drop and like double block my titan, that's fine. Like, how are they beating these zombies, right? Yeah, this is cute, like you only take 6 and you, you eat my titan, but... Oh, really? You're trading? <laughs> We're trading for zombies? We're trading for zombies, I guess. We are done so here. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. New streaming <laughs> donations at 69. I know. It's like the best number. I, I kind of, I secretly don't want anybody to donate anymore. Are you going to try out Nipple Boy Riot? Dryad. There we go. This is this has been like the most useful command that I've had in, in a really long time. Is Infect a worse matchup than Shadow? Yes, yes it is. Or is Shadow not even bad? No, Shadow's bad, but it is it is definitely Infect is definitely worse. So yeah. You've done that. Yeah, but this is the one that I've actually used the most. Like, I, I have had at least, I mean, it's already, it's already been three people asking that question, and we are only 40 minutes into the stream. Ha. Huh. Look at this hand. I think I have to keep this. We can once upon for free, then we can scout, then we can steerings to try to find a land, and then we have a Susa trinket and a Titan. Yeah, I think this is actually a keep. Simigos Chamber is perfect. Remind me of how much of a the Trasher you were in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, but I. That is, I mean, people are forgetting the fact that it, it was legit what was going on, right? Like, I, I don't feel like I'm crazy. I feel like in the matches that I played when I was first testing the card, it was consistently just a win more card. So, of course, yeah, like, the, the different things, the metagame changed to where um, Hogak kind of forced us to go with Field of the Dead. Um, same thing with uh, like how things are looking right now with um, with castle and everything. So like field proved to be better as time went by because also the meta game shifted to a way with where field was better. Like the Oak field was uh, like the reason why we could why we could brawl with Oko. So like as new cards got printed and everything, field also got better. So it's not like I'm crazy, but if you, I, I recommend you go back to like those early streams and you see how um, Field was only winning matches that I was already winning anyway. Um, why am I still playing this game right here? Do I have outs? If I top deck exactly Amulet. 
and my opponent doesn't have force, I might be okay. So I need to double take exactly amulet. That's not an amulet. Because if I had found an amulet, I play amulet, then I play semi gross chamber, I find trinket mage, and I play the second amulet. Then I flash in a land, get Azusa, and I can go with double titans. But as is, we didn't have the amulet, so I don't think we have any outs anymore. No, we don't. We're just going to die too. We can't even titan this room. Okay. No, no, I, I think that, I mean, I, Amulet was, was still like a very live draw for us because we could have double tightened. Uh, but at that point, when we whiffed on the Amulet, then I, I, I don't think we had any outs. Want this, we want these. Trinket Mage probably important in this matchup. This would be insane. I only want access to one explosives to kind of reset the board because of zombies. Uh, Beast within sounds nice. Um, in fact, I actually probably want Beast uh, want Steerings over once upon a time because Amulet is so important in this matchup. Maybe that's too many cantrips. Uh, I think on the draw, I'm just not going to care about these members. O on the play, I mean. Uh, on the draw, I can bring these members back in. Yeah, this is not fine. This is also not a keep. This is way too slow. This is the most reasonable hand we've seen so far, even though it's still not great. Bottom this. We probably have to bottom Asusa and hope that Trinket is good enough. But this is, I, I don't think we're very likely to win this game. Yeah, my opponent has ramp and I don't. All right, th this might be game actually. Uh oh. So I guess I can't just hold up. Gonna play Asus on two. Woof. Ramming up. God damn it. So I guess I just have to upkeep, destroy the amulet. Yeah. I'm dead so many ways now though. If I find a bounce land, do I have outs? Playing about the tournament on Saturday and was wondering what deck I should play. My meta is Burn, Dredge, Mono Red, Prowess, and Grixie Shadow. So what deck would, would you play? I mean, I would play Amulet, but that's because I play Amulet. <laughs> the, the, the meta game doesn't matter much. It matters... Like the list that I play matters more than the meta game, honestly, for me. Um, so I would play Amulet, but thanks for the content. I've reached 10 trophies playing Amulet last season. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Amulet seems good against all. I don't think Amulet is very good against Shadow. Against Shadow nor Prowess. Calni Garden, okay. My opponent's also playing some throwback value cards over there. Uh, that's not a good draw at all. So we're gonna play Trinket Mage, and I think I'm gonna get second amulet and hope that we draw exactly a bounce land. Seems like the only way that we can get away with this. So my, my opponent needs to not have Pact of Negation, nor Ghost Quarter. Oh, they have Amulet? Yeah, we're, we're done here. We're probably just done if they have a Titan, which they do, apparently.
With Ramin Abek Saavedra, there's no way that they don't go for a Ghost Squad lock, so... Yeah, my opponent just drew way better than I did. I don't think there was any way I could have beaten that. So their hand is breeding pool plus X, so they're very likely to have something else. I've been doing good against Prowess, to be honest, but I'm probably just lucky. Um, I think that they have like a little bit too many things that are good against us. Like the fact that they have Blood Moon is kind of a beating. Double Strike. Okay, so they have exactly lethal here. Yeah. That makes sense. Slaughter Pack, surprise! Even if we got Slaughter Pack, I think that we're dead anyway. But... GG's. Ah, look at that, we would have gotten there. Two and one, the current record. Main event is Pioneer. Are you happy with this? this? When will the new Cyber Guide go up on Discord? I have Magic Vest Brussels coming up next week, and I'm too new to able to figure this stuff out myself. Uh, I. I think that the list that I have liked the most so far has been the one that I played on Monday. This is a donation list by Cora, and they wanted to try um, Ancient Steerings. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this. If we find an untapped green off of this once upon a time, this hand is pretty nutty. Or if we're playing against something like Dredge, this hand is also very nutty, and there's our untapped green. Sick! Is there any Mirror Breaker? Yes, it's called Amulet of Vigor. Amulet of Vigor is the Mirror Breaker. <laughs> oh, chat. Oh, chat. Oh, chat. Let me tell you about the time that we had the Natty Bog. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm drooling here. I'm drooling here. I apologize, chat. I apologize. I'm drooling. This is too. This is too exciting. Uh, I think I'm gonna scout. I'm very much going to instant speed bog, no matter what, right here. Unless my opponent has like the worst dredge ever. Like for example, they don't activate they shriek they don't activate their shriek horn on upkeep or something like that. Uh, this is not enough for me to want a bog. I expect my opponent to do more stuff this turn, and indeed they do. We just count two, never lucky. I know I'm so unlucky. Oh yeah, we're gonna get the full value chat. Ooh, ooh, we're gonna get the full value chat. We're gonna get the full value. Loam, thug, loam. All right. So my opponent has loam, thug. Loam times two, thug. Uh. We're gonna bog. Uh, basically, we just can't allow them to. We can't really allow my opponent there to. To, to cast the ox. So let's think here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so we should be fine. Natty bog, baby. Natty bog. Natty bog. Feels good, man. Feels good. Uh, we want Rex Sage, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Rex Sage over one steerings. Just call it a day. Against Fact X, I've been impressed by Gracers over Sacred Drive Scott. Yes, obviously. It's great. It, it just blocks great, right? It blocks Goblin Guide all day. It blocks... Uh, like, it's actually great against... 
Um, it's actually great against um, prowess, unlike scout, which scout is like your easy take all four of them out because of um, lava darts, which is such a brutal card against us. Um, but yeah. You know, overall against like the rest of the decks, against non aggro decks, Scout is significantly better. Also, Scout by herself gives you turn three Titan thanks to Castle, while um, while Gracer does not. I don't think I can keep this hand, so I'm gonna ship it. This one's better, but it's still unkeepable. This one's also unkeepable. This one's good. Keep. Out, out, and out. So this at least gives us two bog activations, which is nice. Two bog triggers. Give me that turn one thoughtsies, baby. No turn one thoughtsies? Feels bad, man. Is Vogue the language with the bigger delta between insane and meh? Uh, yes, uh, for obvious reasons, right? <laughs> for completely obvious and logic re logical reasons. Um, kind of wish we had found something else there. Uh, also, I should have played a snow cover forest there. That was my bad. So they have an imp. Double amalgam is probably going to be hard to beat. Imp. Uh, very lucky that no blood guests were found there. I'm going to get bogged. Uh, Torven Fosh, thank you for the follow. Narc Amoeba. Oof! We really dodged that one. If we were facing 7 power instead of 1, we would be in a much tougher spot right now. I mean, I moved to 4, right? So it's like, yeah, I, I got lucky, but at the same time, I made my luck for myself, right? And here I'm going to play the Snowcore Forest. I'm going to try to delay the Vesuva as long as I can. Just to give myself the most amount of information. But I want to try to tighten on 5 now that I drew the prime time. Green Source. Ugh. All right. At this point, I think I'm just going to have to copy the my opponent's stomping ground here. This is not good enough for me to want a bog, and I need the second green sword so I can tighten next turn. Most people don't play ghasts anymore because of the ox. That is crazy to me. Really? Like, ghast was the card to go because of the oxes? The oxen, I guess? Um, so they have Imp and Gorge Mountain. I guess just a mountain. Yeah, I would imagine that card would be insane in Dredge. It makes a lot of sense. Prime time you opponent. Prime time you. So I'm gonna get a blue source for Tolary West that I have in hand, and I'm also gonna get a field so we can start clocking. And I'm gonna bounce the Vesuva copy stopping ground. This gives me access to Bog next turn if that's what I wanna do. Or it gives me access to a blue source if I need to transmute, so it gives me the most flexibility. Dredge loam, there's the ox. Yeah, but you see the awkwardness of this card, right? Like the fact that my opponent got... If they hadn't gotten two lands, they would be able to cast the Ox, the ox here. So it was probably correct for them to cast Loam last turn without any targets. 
because like their out was to mill the ox, but now they don't have eight cards to exile to it, which is pretty hilarious, right? How the the actual correct line for my opponent there was to uh, to loam and not get anything back. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Just cast loan to put it in the yard. Mull to four into the natty bog. Get there. No big deal. Don't at me. Yeah, it sounds it sounds pretty crazy for uh, to cut ghasts. Um, I would imagine that ghast is better than Archimeva. But maybe they just cast like all four ghasts and they went all in on like Mibas and like trying to maximize uh, the ox. So they expect to, I know, to exile a bunch of stuff. Uh, I don't think I can keep this hand, unfortunately. I'm gonna play, no, let's ship it. Ugh. I guess I'm gonna keep this. We need a green source or we can't really win this, this game. <laughs> Always saying he's unlucky. I am so unlucky. I mean, look at this hand that I had to keep right now. No green sources, barring a ghost squatter. Like, how unlucky is that? Um, hopefully, I'm gonna be be paired against Dredge again, and that's gonna be great. Eldrassi Temple. So, all right. So it's Tron. Etron. West go. Turn to TKS. Must be nice. There goes my primeval titan. The chalice makes sure I can't get the second one. So let's do some of this. Semi Ghost Chamber is nice. So now I guess we're going to transmit for explosives and we're going to play it for one. So we can't, we can't realistically beat a Karn. Whoo! All right. My opponent has what we call the nuts in the business. Um, I feel like I have to play this turn assuming the Asusa is going to die. So what we will do is play Simic. Bounce, play Asusa. Play transmute. Yeah, we have to play bog. Sure, bog myself, whatever. Uh, then I'm gonna play semi growth chamber, bouncing T West. I'm gonna be one mana off. Feels really bad. Exactly one mana off. There was no way for me to play around this though. Is that a tier one deck? I think it's always been tier one. I mean, I, I mean, not always, but like, it's been tier one for a really long time. But it's always, it's always a very underrepresented and very underappreciated or undervalued or whatever. Uh, and I feel like people have multiple times kind of realized that Amulet is tier one. And then they kind of forget very quickly afterwards, which is, which is a very weird a very weird play pattern. I guess it's not a play pattern, it's more like a tendency pattern. Do I have any outs here? I don't think I do. Because I just don't have enough mana to blow up the explosives and also cast a Titan, even if I find a bounce land. 
so I don't even know what I'm doing here. Well, I guess I need I need this Azusa to survive, so we're not blocking. I need Azusa to survive, I need my opponent to not have a Ballista, and I need them to not kill my Azusa. Azusa is my only way out. I need to top the exactly a bounce land, and I win. That's my that's my line. This EE play brilliant, they say. Oh, thank you. Thanks, opponent. Didn't you want to E for zero to get rid of shells? Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. People don't forget they just struggle to play it, feel, uh, feel it's bad and move off of it and get shown it's still great. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's not like... I, it's not like people have not been shown that the deck is great. Like, I try to do it all the time. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, so they had the dismember. Yeah, so now I'm I'm out of outs, basically. they I needed them to not have dismember and to draw a bounce land right here. All right. So my opponent's giving me a shot here. This is actually a mistake. Um, because now I can actually crack this when now if I draw a castle or any bounce land, I actually have Titan mana. Yeah, that was a pretty bad punt from them. I I, I can't punish them, but that was a pretty bad mistake on their part. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should have packed before the draw step. That's fair. That's fair. I should have packed before the draw step. Like it, it's very very small, but I but it, it is actually technically correct. So we're gonna side, shave some pass. We're gonna take it out of bog. Uh, explosives pretty bad. Uh, we're gonna shave some some one drops because of chalice. I guess I'm just gonna shave the steerings, and I'd rather have the scout instead. Let's do this. It's 100% because people don't want to invest much time in learning the deck or just don't have the time. Yeah, exactly. It is definitely a deck that requires way more from its pilot than the average deck, which is something that is pretty disheartening for a lot of people or like disincentivizing, I guess. How are the students and Dragon Mages working out so far? Uh, steering has been okay in the in the. I mean, we only play. This is the fifth match right now, so we've been we played a, a few amount of matches. This is again a donation list, um, but yeah, they, they have been they have been reasonable. I haven't hated them at least. Let's put it that way. Uh, I think I like this hand. I'm gonna keep it. Well, when I once upon on one. kind of need that green source but at the same time I kind of want that prime time as well huh this is a very rough one if I if I had found the bounce land this would be super easy right I just take the bounce land because that's literally the only piece that I'm missing here and the bounce land would also give me the the blue that I, the mana that I need for the amulet uh, for transmitting Terlaria but now that I'm presented with this what do I want to do about it? I think having access to green mana is going to be a little bit too important for me not to do. Drassi Temple. Chalice on zero, probably. Expedition map. Okay. 
radium fountain. Okay, so the line here is going to be amulet and second green source. This, this is going to mean that now My opponent with the turn two thought knots. Yeah, we can tell Aria for a bounce land. But now we're actually lacking a Titan. So I might need to tell Aria for a pact. Which honestly really sucks to need to Teleria for a Summoner's Pact. Because it exposes it to another Thought Knot and it exposes me to a, to a Chalice. My opponent is being friendly in chat, which I appreciate, but at the same time, it's just like, I also want to play the game. <laughs> uh, ooh. This is actually super close. Mm. So I'm still two turns away from a Titan, so I guess I'd rather um, Beast Within here. Because even if I spend this turn to transmit for a Titan, I still need to... I still don't have the mana to cast it on the following turn. So I guess I'd rather delay my opponent's chance of beast within in uh, my opponent's chance of having another thought knot for as long as possible. Now the question here is do I take the four? I think I don't. That's a terrible draw, but... Okay, so we're going to bait here. We're going to see what happens. I'm going to jig you. Now's your chance. They do. Okay. That's bad for me and good for me at the same time. It's good for me because it means it means that my my rot farm is actually good to go. But it's bad for me because now I can't um now I can't actually uh, do anything here. Blast zone is what they go pick. That's interesting. Take three from the beast, that's fine. What's this? Walking Ballista for one. Okay. Prime time? 
poggers. One, two, three, four. I'm surprised my opponent didn't go get something like a tech hedge or whatever. Can I kill here? I guess I can't kill, but I can force the chump. Is it worth it to force the chump over getting some boss? Is the question. Um, yeah, this member plus ballista could be problematic. So I guess that we go with this. Yes. So I guess I can still double strike. So if I, as since I can still double strike, I'm gonna go with field plus sun home. There's nothing else I'm doing this turn. I could have used gemstone mine to to do some more stuff or whatever. But so that's sixteen. No, I couldn't have double titan because I'm, I'm out of pacts. All this dust, that's fine. Yeah, my opponent attacking here is them. It's funny that my, my opponent is complaining about luck, how magic is pretty like luck-based right now, and then they make a play like that that leaves them literally dead on board. Um, so that's why I'm like, is it really luck based when you're opening yourself to this? I mean, I, I think that I'm still very, I'm still very favored to win there, but at the same time, it's one of those things that my opponent is not giving themselves a shot. Like they they're not helping themselves. So let's put it that way. Mm. Let's go with this. Yeah, they know for sure that I have a land in hand. Uh, this is again a mulligan, unfortunately. This is this is fine. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this, and I'm gonna bottom this sun home. Any opinions or thoughts on the meta so far? Uh, it looks pretty. F it looks fine. Um, the I think that overall, what I was expecting to happen is kind of happening, which is uh, Death Shadow uh, rising to the top of the meta game, and s and same thing with Amulet, obviously. Um, are we gonna have another thought? Not uh, turn two thought. Not is that what's gonna go? What's gonna happen right now? Only going for the full trifecta. Uh, I think I'm gonna get Dasusa here actually. Alright, at least we don't get we don't get uh, turn two thought not at three three games in a row. Bounce land? Not bounce land. Yeah, 
So they do have the tech edge and they did not go for tech edge last time. So you see what I'm saying? Like my opponent is complaining about things being luck based. Also, I may sequence my lands there. They're complaining about like being unlucky or whatever, but at the same time, they make plays like this. Like they could have gotten tech edge when they went for blast zone and they got blast zone instead. So it's just like, I don't know, man. Like, it, it's all cool to complain and everything, but... Dragon Breath 44 thank you for the subscription. Welcome back. Thank you for the tier 1 sub. Welcome back to the Primetime Stronghold. Um, could have built Burn with the money I've subbed, but who would want to play for it? <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Thank you so much for the support, Dragon Breath. Um, yeah, but it's just like... If you keep... If you keep like blaming things on luck, then how are you going to learn? And right, same same thing here, right? Like my opponent went and they immediately take edge my castle, leaving now if I had drawn a, a a bounce land, I can tighten my opponent right then and there. But it's just like, if my opponent keeps on just blaming things and their bad decisions on luck, then obviously they're not going to learn from their mistakes. And they're not next time that they play against Amulet, they're going to like immediately go for deck edge there on my castle and be like, oh yeah, yeah, that, that, you, you got so lucky. It's just like, yeah, but you also like deck edge my castle when you didn't need to. You see what I'm saying? So it's one of those things that... I don't know. There's way more value in learning from your mistakes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you ready, chat? Are you ready, chat? Are you ready, chat? Are you ready, chat? It's going to happen. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> Ah. Oh man. Oh man. Woo! 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 Oh man. Oh. Oh. Oh, is it getting hot in here or what? <laughs> is it getting hot in here or what? <laughs> Oh man. Oh. It wasn't even that awesome, right? But it was it just felt so good. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that was too exciting. Oh. I I can't handle this. <laughs> Clipping coming for your blue pressure. Oh man. Oh, that was just too good. <laughs> oh man. Feels good, man. Feels good. Opponent going for the coding. Bounce land, radium fountain. Unfortunately, it doesn't do it. So I think what we do here is we attack with both at Karn. My opponent is going to be forced into blocking the Veiloth here. Otherwise, they lose their Karn and their coding does nothing. So it's basically a free attack for the Azusa. And they're going to get to kill one of my lands. They're going to get to kill one of my lands, but then I'm just going to Liquid Metal Coating their Chalice and their... I'm going to force the Chalice and the Coating. Flow to mana. It kind of sucks because it costs me two lands, right? But I have to. Boom. 
boom. So it is definitely a very a very costly play. But I think it's fine. So here, if they have this member, they have to dismember the Bailoth. Yeah, it has to be an, exactly a, an untapped green. Sure. All right, so Karn down. We're going to play land. Then we're going to pass. So things are pretty much at parity at this point. My opponent has five cards in hand to my one, because I already mulliganed. And they have a 5-5, five, five, while I have a 4-4, four, four, so that definitely does not, does not help my case. What is this, a thought not? All right, so things are going to be pretty much even at this point. <clears throat> Um, yeah, we're, we're not drawing well here, for sure. <laughs> Maybe actually it's better for me to, to just hang back there? I guess it kind of depends on what the, my opponent's hand looks like. Another thought not? Yeah. I think I'm actually going to hang back. Well, I mean, of course I'm going to hang back now, right? Because this is just not a good trade for me. Like, I'm just trading 4 for 8, so obviously at this point I'm hanging back. One thing I miss about the path build was pathing extra doors when whipping our lands. Yeah, that was actually something that came up <laughs> that I, I, I found myself doing more often than not. Blast zone, blow up my amulet. Oh, smasher. Sure. Well, I mean, it's, this is still not lethal. Still not lethal. We ended, we're we're going to probably end up losing the game, but just like, the fact that we got a free Bayloth out of the deal was just so hype. It was it was almost good enough. I would even say it was worth it. But yeah, we're at, we're at turn 11, and we're like failing to find any cantrips, we're failing to find any, any green lands, we're failing to find any titans. It's kind of brutal that we were forced to get the Force of Vigor. What is this, Sandbringer? Oh, well, that's, that's a miserable slow roll. In my opponent, the GG's, and we die. Feels bad, man. Feels bad to lose that one. Yesterday I won my LGS with Amulet, but I felt really downplaying it. I did almost all wrong about one anyway. Best way to rejoin the deck quick. I'm thinking about bringing in a PTQ this weekend. Um, I mean, check out the videos. That's I mean, I, that's the only like easy advice that I can give you, Andrea. Just like. Try to get there just to do the thing. Sorry, we're a little bit unlucky with mana. Thanks. Good luck to you as well. And it looks, I, I, I've actually played with, uh, talked with this opponent in the past as well. 
Um, yeah. Um, honestly, like the thirty land builds have been had felt nicer. Andrea for the seventh month in a row. Thank you so much for the subscription. Thanks for the continued support, my friend. Um, yeah, if you have like any specific questions, of course, you know, you know that you can just message me on Discord or whatever. But like off the top of my head, I, I honestly don't have any, <laughs> any, any like easy recommendations to give you. Um, I mean, if if you're rusty, just like just start, just jam a couple of leagues before the PTQ on the weekend, and you know, try to get a little bit up to speed. Uh, but the the deck has been good. Uh, but but yeah, I'm gonna give this um, this list another shot, uh, some some extra value for for Cora. Uh, I really appreciate the the support, and I have the time. Today's gonna be I'm gonna have enough time to to do a longer stream. So you know we're gonna go for it again. Oh, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. You can give uh, you can go ahead and you can um, use the link below to check out the next uh, streams and make sure you like subscribe and all that good stuff and I will see you in the next one bye bye